south of Spain on the Rock of Gibraltar off the Mediterranean Sea, you'll find the caves. Inside, up a catwalk, archaeologists are busy at work unearthing artifacts from the Neanderthals who once lived there. And while these primitive beings died out tens of thousands of years ago, genetic evidence shows they have not vanished. Neanderthals are not totally extinct. Many people uh, are the descendants of Neanderthals. Does it change our view of, of human history and of who we are? Scientists have made a shocking discovery. Many modern-day humans are walking around carrying archaic DNA. Those of European or Asian descent, roughly 1 to 5 percent of their genome comes from Neanderthals. So we are Neanderthals. In special clean labs like this one at UC Santa Cruz, scientists can extract Neanderthal DNA from tiny bits of fossilized bone. It is an amazing thing that we can get DNA out of our ancestors that are now extinct. Professor Ed Green runs the paleogenomics lab. He says advances in technology allow experts to quickly sift through and locate ancient DNA. We have fantastically fast machines. How did this mashup occur? Chalk it up to prehistoric hanky-panky. About 50 to 80,000 years ago, when our ancestors migrated out of Africa, they encountered Neanderthals in Europe and West Asia, and in the east, a distant cousin of Neanderthals called Denisovans. These hookups resulted in children. Today, we carry traces of these encounters in our DNA. And they affect our health in, in, in many different ways. Some Neanderthal and Denisovan genes boost our immune systems and protect against infections. Others increase the risk of depression, skin problems, allergies, blood clots, even diabetes. A few unusual variants help some of us adapt to extreme environments. It could be the high altitude in Tibet, or it could be the very cold environment around the Arctic. Professor Rasmus Nielsen at UC Berkeley headed up a study that discovered how modern Tibetans carry a gene from these archaic humans. It regulates the molecule that carries oxygen in the blood and allows Tibetans to survive more than three miles above sea level. When they breathe, they only get about 60% as much oxygen. Professor Svante Pebo is a founder of the field of paleogenomics. He and his team have sequenced the entire Neanderthal genome. As to why? We want to find out more about our origins and our history. Just ask Steve Zapyain. Yep, this caveman got around. Steve joined a research project run by 23andMe to study rare blood cancers. And in the process, he discovered how 4% of his genome is Neanderthal. It is way cool to be a caveman. Neanderthals were once considered brutes, clumsy and stupid. Remember those Geico commercials? So easy a caveman could do it? I think that view is really changing. Back in Gibraltar, meet Nana and Flint, forensic reconstructions of a female and child Neanderthal found here. We now know our ancient relatives had a sophisticated culture, adorned themselves with feathers, buried their dead, and as seen in one cave, even etched art. Suddenly, they disappeared. No one knows why. Did we bring diseases that wiped them out? Did we actively hunt them and, and drive them to extinction? Or did we just outnumber them? Now that scientists have the complete Neanderthal genome, they want to look for all genetic changes in modern day people. Changes that might hold the clues as to why we survived. In San Francisco, Alan Martin, KPIX5. As for why an ancient gene increases the risk of blood clots, well, back then, when you got a serious cut, you needed your blood to clot quickly. Today, since we live longer and sit around, blood that easily clots can lead to a heart attack or stroke. Paul Deano in check-in 